This is my brand new Raspberry Pi router. It connects to my apartment's Wi-Fi and forwards internet to all the devices behind it, hiding them from my ISP. But why am I hiding them from my ISP? So about a year ago, my wife and I moved into our new apartment and they provide a community Wi-Fi solution. That means that you don't need to set up routers or modems, you can just connect your devices instantly. Now while this is great for the average resident, it means that I don't have the ability to configure my router and do any sort of networking things. So I haven't been able to connect to devices over Wi-Fi like Raspberry Pis or update my 3D printers or even host something like a Minecraft server. So I called up my ISP and I asked them if I could just connect my own router to the ethernet port in our apartment and just, you know, use that as an access point to share Wi-Fi to my devices. But they said that they scan the network and kick off anything that looks like a router. So that wasn't an option. Now, I was pretty defeated, but I went ahead using a router offline for a few months just to connect with my 3D printers, but one day I decided that I had enough. I decided that I would figure out how to get around the no router rule. Enter the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pis are small single board computers that run Linux and can be used to do a variety of things. The first step was to choose an operating system for the Raspberry Pi. I decided to go with a headless version of Raspberry Pi OS. The light version of Raspberry Pi OS doesn't come with a desktop environment, so there's a lot less processing to be done by the CPU on the Raspberry Pi, and it comes with about a gigabyte less of packages and stuff. After booting it up and connecting a keyboard and monitor, I got it connected to the Wi-Fi by using a tool called Network Manager. Using Network Manager, I was able to list all the available Wi-Fi networks and connect to our community Wi-Fi. I also used it to give the Ethernet port of the Pi a static IP address, which will come in handy later. By the way, if you want to create your own Raspberry Pi router, check out my website, spencersdesk.com. I've got all the project files and code there. Once I got connected to the internet, I unleashed the two most notorious commands known to Raspberry Pi users. Yeah, I updated the Pi. Once the Pi was updated, the next step was to install a tool called DNS Mask. This gives us the ability to create a DNS forwarder and a DHCP server. The DNS forwarder kind of acts like a DNS server, like Google or Cloudflare's. So when our Pi wants to reach out to a website like google.com, it sends that request to the DNS forwarder, which sends that to a DNS server. And then the DNS server says, oh, google.com is this IP address and returns it to the DNS forwarder. The DNS forwarder will cache that IP address and then return the IP address to the device that requested it. And then in the future, every time someone requests google.com's IP address, the DNS forwarder has it cached so it can um, return it much faster and doesn't have to reach back out to the DNS server. The DHCP server, on the other hand, is what is actually acting as our router. It's handing out IP leases and getting devices connected. With DNS mask installed, I just needed to create a configuration file. First, I tell the DHCP server to only listen on the ethernet port, so it will only listen to devices that are physically connected to it. Next, I explicitly tell it not to listen on the wireless port. Next, I give the server a range of IP addresses that it can hand out. So I went with 10 to 100 for 12 hour leases. I think you can do anywhere from two to 255, but I wanted to reserve the first 10, um, and I don't see myself needing more than 100 devices. So I just went with 10 to 100. The final thing we need to configure with DNS mask is the IP address for both the um, gateway and the DNS forwarder. The gateway is pretty much just the IP address of the router. You can think of it as that. And then the DNS forwarder will also be the router's IP. So since we assigned that IP address to the ethernet port, we're just going to point the gateway and DNS forwarder to that ethernet port. So now when a device is connected to the Pi router, it will know that the Pi router's ethernet port's IP address is what it should be reaching out to. After finishing the configuration file for DNS mask, I just restarted and enabled the DNS mask service. And now we technically have a router. You're now able to connect from one device to another across the router. But we still aren't passing internet from the router connected to the internet to the devices behind it. To enable this, we need to use something called NAT or network address translation. So if I have a device here like a 3D printer or a Pi running a 3D printer, and I have my router here, then if this wants to make a request to the internet, it will send a request to the router with its IP address. So what the router needs to do is rewrite that request to have the router's IP address, and then it sends that off to the community's Wi-Fi, 
and then you know all of it is handled downstream. But right now, we're not doing that. So network address translation is going to do the rewriting of that IP address. So with the router rewriting all these IP addresses, it looks like the router is just a single device connected to the internet. This is called masquerading. We're going to do NAT by installing something called NF tables. This is a packet filtering tool. You can think of it like a firewall. So after installing NF tables, we just need to do a little bit of configuration. We're just writing a rule that says that the packets that go from our devices out of the router need to be masqueraded. After that, we just need to enable IP forwarding in the Linux kernel, and then we should be good. Now we have a router that functions perfectly well, but I wanted to take it a step further. So I installed something called Tailscale on my Pi. Tailscale is a VPN or a virtual private network. Not like the ones that you see advertised here on YouTube. It acts more like the Wi-Fi on our local network, kind of like the network I'm setting up with the Pi, but this network can be forwarded across the internet so that I can connect to that from any device. This means that if I want to, I can connect to my Pi router if I'm out somewhere at like a local coffee shop. As a final security measure, I configured NF tables to only allow port 22 requests from the ethernet port and from my tailnet. I did this so that in the weird case that someone was going through the community's network, um, they wouldn't have the ability to SSH into the Pi router across the community Wi-Fi. You would only be able to SSH in if you got into the tailnet or if you physically connected to the router. So now the router is done. It is doing exactly what I needed it to. It is connecting my devices to the internet and my ISP has not yet kicked it off the network. I can also connect to it from anywhere in the world and do whatever I like on it. But even though I had the Pi router set up, I wasn't quite satisfied yet. It felt pretty unpolished. So I hopped into Fusion 360 and after printing out a few iterations, I landed on this design. I also ended up getting these small OLED screens to display like device stats and network stats on the case itself, just to see how well the Pi was running and if the network was still up. But mostly I added it because screens are cool. I also ended up adding a small button to the case and a knock to a fan to keep everything cool. After getting the Pi mounted and everything wired up, I closed it up with the lid. Now, I know for a router that this seems pretty big, but it's nowhere near as big as your mama. So with the router assembled, it was time to work on the software to run the screen to display the stats of the Pi. I just wanted a couple of scrolling pages to show how the Pi was doing, how much traffic there was on the network, and whether things were healthy or not. I also wanted a button to toggle the screen on and off, but somewhere along the way I ended up deciding to add a Raspberry Pi screensaver as well, so there's that. The final step was to have that screen script run every time the Pi was booted and to turn off when the Pi was shut down. This was simply done by creating a service in systemd and adding a small little power down script. And with that, the Pi router was finally complete. I've left it running for a few days now and have had a few computers connected to it, streaming video, and the Pi really hasn't gotten above about 42 Celsius, which is very respectable. I can't tell you how excited I am to get all of my devices and printers connected back to the internet. If you want to learn to create your own Raspberry Pi router, then check out my website. I've got links to the code for the screen, the 3D models for the case, and all of the different commands I had to run to get everything installed on the Pi. If you enjoyed this video, then I'd appreciate it if you'd leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss future projects. And if you're looking for something else to watch, check out this video where I programmed my 3D printer to play Fur Elise and came up with an entirely unnecessary programming language to program music. Thanks for watching. Bye.